Thank you, uh, Timothy, and uh, thank you too for all. I still remember that uh, a few years ago, I still sit same with you in this uh, APEC meeting in uh, many places. Yeah. But this way, uh, again, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Moderator, to his uh, event. And, uh, and thank you for inviting me to participate in this important event. It is an honor for me to present among OPEC economic leaders and CEO in leading companies in the Asia Pacific regions. The recent G20 meeting in Antalya, Turkey, highlights three important uh, priorities. Global recovery and strengthening potentials, enhancing resilience, and reinforcing sustainability. These priorities are very much in line with the theme of APEC this year, which focuses on growth and inclusiveness. APEC and G20 share the same goals, maintaining regional and global stability, promotion of equality and inclusiveness, which means no one will be left behind in the development process. APEC and G20 can play an important role in maintaining growth in the midst of global uncertainty. The roles need to be maintained in order to give a stimulus to all our stakeholders and promote freeze and fire trade in the region. As a member of G20 and APEC, Indonesia sees the need to strengthen the synergy of policies and both forum to achieve optimal results for the stability of global economy. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, for Indonesia, inclusive growth is the key word to keep our economy engine working. Being the largest economy in Southeast Asia, Indonesia possesses strong and healthy economic fundamentals. 4.7 GDP growth by the end of the year, budget deficits under 2.5%, inflation rate toward 4% with surplus trade balances, Rupiah continues strengthening against US dollar among the strongest compared to all the Asian currencies. Indonesia's one bill economy is the largest in South Asia. And important thing, more than 60 million Indonesians will join the middle class in the next 10 years. But we also face current challenges, slow, glo slow global market and filing commodities. Indonesia, because it is, have, it is export, slowing, more slowing, revenue, of course, income of the people slowing too. That's why our imports going decrease. It's mean because domestic prices in many parts of our community is going down. In the midst of global economic uncertainty, Indonesia continues to promote structural reform through aggressive policies which target to ensure the sustainability of inclusive growth, to promote open economy, to increase competitiveness, and to maintain conductive, conducive environment for investment. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, a number of policies taken are, among others, to reduce fuel subsidy to finance productive sector and people welfare, to cut 35% of permit to boost competitiveness, to modernize infrastructures including toll road, port, and electric power, to change the paradigms from consumptive to productive economy, and to improve infrastructure, particularly transportation energy sector. Recently, Indonesia launched six economic stimulus package. The ultimate goal are, of the policy package are to improve business climate and to promote equal opportunity among business players in the same country. This six package consists of simplifications and revision of more than 200 regulations, ranging from low 
to ministerial regulations. This, the package will have targets including to make business licenses process shorter and faster, to give tax incentive to certain business and industries, to provide affordable loan for small and medium enterprises, to ensure minimum wage certainly to promote a conducive industrial relation, to simplify land acquisition procedures, to speed up strategic infrastructure development, and to develop more special economic zone. We are sure that the above package will be able to stimulate business competitiveness, enlarging domestic market, as well promoting more investment, both domestic and foreign. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Indonesia with 250 million population is an important market for many countries. With strong human capital and large natural resources, Indonesia has the potential to play a role as global manufacturing base. We would like to strengthen our agricultural sector and at the same time to promote our manufacturing industry. The ultimate goal is twofold, to promote food security and to provide jobs for the people with manufacturing and industry. Indonesia has too much potential. In Java Islands, inhabited of 60% of Indonesian population, have strong potential for agriculture and manufacturing industry. Sumatra in the west is the western part of Indonesia, is a strong population energy base. In Kalimantan, is the key producer of coal and plantation product. In eastern part, Indonesia is west known for its plantation, fisheries, and other natural resources. We believe the strong collaboration between government and businessmen and investor is needed to realize those potential. Thank you for all of you that have enjoyed your investment in Indonesia and we understand, you understand that the end of the year, starting the Asian community, Asian economic community, is meaning the cooperation in competition between ASEAN there are flow of goods, services, and peoples, and will be big market, 60 million peoples in the new market for ASEAN, for you and for any businessmen in the ASEAN region. Indonesia will be more open for FDI, especially those that create a large employment and promote economic value added. Ladies and gentlemen, collaboration among nations is key for the global economy to make a turnaround. Indonesia government, with the support and the input for the Indonesian business community, has adjusted the rule of the game of doing business. Indonesia continues to open its economy to all businessmen and foreign investors, including from APEC economics, to participate in the development in Indonesia. In return, we hope that our colleagues from other countries will do the same. Thank you.